look at that. Some of our neighbors are cleaning up tonight after that line of storms swept through the region earlier this evening. Good evening and thank you for being here with us at 11 o'clock. I'm Lorenzo Hall. A whole lot of that damage was centered around one neighborhood in College Park. The homes between Greenbelt Road and the Beltway right along Rhode Island Avenue. People living there hopefully taking it easy tonight after an evening of cleaning up. Delia Gonzalez is live there tonight with a look at what those storms left behind. Hey, Dave. Hey, Lorenzo, we are live on Blackfoot Road, and while the storm is over, the potential danger remains. Check this out. This tree back there in that front yard is leaning dangerously close to live power lines. Being lined now down because of this storm, all wrapped up in this vehicle here. That car is not going anywhere until Pepco can come and take this situation and get it under control. Consequently, the folks who live here, a lot of them had to leave for the night. Pepco and emergency management crews got to work in College Park, cleaning up after a brief but powerful storm blew through the area. Oh yeah, no, the wind was was pretty nasty. I mean, it was probably hurricane force. I mean, all the trees were bent sideways. I thought I'd lose a lot more. He's no meteorologist, but Zach Adams says those fierce winds knocked down his tree that already took a beating during the winter windstorm. In fact, most of the down trees we spotted off Rhode Island Avenue in College Park were already compromised. Sadly, this homeowner on Hollywood Road only noticed his backyard tree was completely rotted out after it came crashing down on his house, tearing through the roof and destroying a portion of the second floor. The man who lives here, he wasn't up to talking after looking at all that damage, but as cliche as it is, it could have been much worse. No one was hurt. As for Zach Adams over on 50th, he watched his tree fall, held his breath, Hope for the best. Thankfully, it didn't hit the house, it hit the street, but it took my power line out with it. And thankfully, it missed my neighbor's car, so small miracle. Yeah. And some more people are really uh, counting their blessings. Take a look at this house, just barely touched by the limbs of this tree, but take a look at the damage. This is incredible. And so, Neighbors say they, it could have been hurricane force winds. That's technically 74 miles an hour. We did not have that here. But listen, it was pretty strong and fierce to pull up a tree like this. We're live in College Park, Julia Gonsal, WUSA 9. Yeah, incredible images there. Best to those families tonight. Julia, thank you. You be safe as well. And you know, those storms came as we were under a yellow weather alert. I have the chief here with a look at the other damage reports coming in this evening. Tom. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. It was also bad timing, as you mentioned, yeah. right during the uh, rush hour. So here are the uh, damage reports. These are trees. Report the trees down. That's the hail we had in Burke County. We showed you that video at the top of the show. And then a lot of tree damage up uh, 95 toward Baltimore. We'll highlight a couple. And really, the concentration was in the College Park area in terms of where Delia was, in terms of the number of trees. But we'll highlight a couple. So at 420, a quarter-sized hail, and we had ping-pong ball-sized hail in parts of Burke. And that was that video that you saw. Now we'll move a little bit over to the east. And at National, wind gusts at 51 miles per hour. That's pretty impressive. That'll bring down trees. Doesn't have to be hurricane force. And the radar now, last hour or so, has just a couple of sprinkles down in La Plata, and that's about it. We're pretty much done. Can't rely on a passing shower, but we're pretty much done with anything severe overnight. No doubt about that. Tomorrow morning at uh, 6 o'clock, 70 downtown, 65 in Gaithersburg, 64 in Manassas. So some temps in the 60s to start. Pretty comfortable start, actually. By 8 o'clock, we're 72 downtown, just a few clouds up toward Martinsburg and Hagerstown. And then by 9.30, we're in the upper 70s with just a few clouds. We'll come back. We'll talk about where we think fog is going to develop overnight and if we have to issue a yellow weather alert for tomorrow afternoon. All right. We'll see you shortly. Thank you, Topper.